Hey, do you want to get some things you need? Do you want to save some money doing it? Here's a new way to do it. Look for it at an estate sale. Now you know all know what this is. Somebody dies, the family goes through the entire house, collects up all their stuff, and it all goes up for sale. You drive around, you see a sign on a telephone pole, estate sale, this day, this time, this address. And uh, I've gone to a few of these things, maybe about a dozen or so in the last three or four years. And I've gotten a couple of really good deals at estate sales. But still, the grand prize eludes me. What's the grand prize? I go to an estate sale. I see a couple of computers there. Higher tech computers. Maybe some of the uh, Bitcoin ASIC mining machines there that nobody else knew what they were. But I know what I'm looking for. I know what those are. And there's a good chance that on that computer, there's a Bitcoin wallet there. Hopefully without a password, but if there is, maybe there's a text file on the computer saying what the password is. Get that computer, take it home, get into that thing, see how many Bitcoins are there, and cha-ching, make the money. Hasn't happened yet in many years, but you never know, it could happen. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's the ultimate goal. But I'm going to show you in this video, here are a couple of the really good deals I've found at estate sales without even really trying very hard. I have, I've been to about a dozen or so, and I've purchased things maybe three times. You know, most of them I'll go in, look around, see what they have. Okay, yeah, yeah, nothing here I can use. All right, whatever, go on. You know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I got the thought for this video in my head yesterday. I uh, was out in the area. And I saw a sign for once. Okay, it just started a half an hour ago. Hopefully all the computer stuff is still there. I'm going to go look. So I had to drive to this place about a mile away, following some guy who wasn't even doing the speed limit up this two-lane road in the hills, driving me crazy, just trying to get there before someone else gets my Bitcoin mining computer money. And I got there and I looked around and it was clearly an old person's house. The outside was like a faded blue-green kind of a color. Inside, just like all the decorations and things. That's something else. You can really get a good example of life. A life lesson from going to an estate sale. You walk through a house where someone lived for many years and has died. And you just look around and you really got to see things. This is what they thought was normal. This was their whole life. These things meant things to them. And, uh, yeah, different people, different places, different things. You learn a lot from that kind of thing. So one day, someone might be coming through here, looking at my stuff. Well, it better be someone who can really appreciate what this stuff is and what it means to me, and it should mean something to them, too. It won't, but, you know... Only so much you can do about that. But uh, this person's house I went to, they had the nice maple furniture in the kitchen, and they had a wall display of hundreds of spoons. You know what I mean. Those little spoons, about that long. Why do people collect spoons? You have a couple, 50 or 100 of them up on a wall. A bunch of spoons. And they don't do anything. They just said, I could understand if it was little thimbles or golf balls that had pictures on them or things like that. But it's a bunch of spoons. Not a good investment. And now they're all laying there in a big pile and they're going to get scrapped out probably because no one else cared about them except for the one person who actually spent the extra retail price money to get them. And now look what you got for it. But I walked around the house, I did see two computers there, but they were older machines. One had a Windows XP logo on the front, one had a Vista logo. There's no tech stuff in this house. This was someone who just had a computer and didn't know anything about cryptocurrency. Uh, it was, you know, the, no, these computers ain't going to have nothing on them, forget them, whatever. I went downstairs into the basement slash garage area and looked around. Uh, I'm looking for certain tools that I could use for certain things, but it's not going to make any sense to pay retail prices for something I'm going to use for maybe two weeks, and then it's going to sit in a closet or in the toolbox for, for many years thereafter. That's not a good deal. 
So, looked around the house, saw everything. Okay, nothing here I can use, so I'm gonna get out of here. And that's how it goes most of the time. But, here's a couple of examples of things I've found in estate sales. And when you see one in your area, go to it. You might be surprised what you see there. I went, uh, here's another story. I went to one oh, about a month ago. And in the front yard on tables, they had puzzles. Maybe 30 or 40 puzzles. And they had Monopoly games. And there was a, at least a dozen different Monopoly games there. I didn't know there was more than one type of Monopoly game. And the people doing the sales said, oh yeah, there were a bunch more Monopoly games too, but somebody already came and grabbed all those. I said, wow. I thought there was one Monopoly. I guess I learned something. There's a whole bunch of different Monopolies, apparently. Anyhow, look at the couple of examples here I'm going to give to you. And remember, this is a financial opportunity for you. Get a good deal on something, save money, and there you go. I bought this at one of the first estate sales I ever went to. I paid a whole $15 for it. And what is it? It's a Milwaukee Tools brand Sawzall. Look at that thing. And there's a whole bunch of extra new blades here for it. Some new, some used. I haven't had to use it very often, but it does come in handy once in a while, and how can you go wrong for $15? Here's something else I got in an estate sale. A snowblower. After the last winter, my wife suggested maybe we need a snowblower. And then, you know, when you're married, that means get a snowblower. But I saw a sign in front of my house for it. I went back right when they opened. I looked. This was there. Ah, oh, how much you want for the snowblower? 20 bucks. I said, okay, sold. I looked up the model number on this thing. It's from 1984. Look at this. The paint isn't even faded. It's not rusted on the bottom. I'll just change the oils in it. Put some fresh gas in it, and I'm ready to go for the next winter time.